Hi, I'm Carlos Vinuesa from the Android Developer Relations team. And I'm here to talk to you about Ultra Wideband. In this session, we will see an introduction to Ultra Wideband technology and real life examples on how it can be used. Then, an overview of our new Jetpack library for building apps with UWB. And finally, a walkthrough of some code to see how to use it. So what is Ultra Wideband? Have you ever walked to your front door with your hands full of grocery bags and wished that the door could unlock on its own? Or what if that podcast that you're listening in the kitchen transferred magically to the garage's smart speaker just as you get there? Well, this technology could enable all that and more. Think of it as a precise high-frequency radar built into your Android phone. Ultra Wideband, or UWB, is a technology that enables secure and accurate communication at very short ranges. It can measure distance, angle, and elevation as close as three inches or 10 centimeters. And unlike GPS, also works indoors. So what kind of experiences can you build with UWB? I mentioned some already, but here are a few more. You could use it as a highly secure data transfer mechanism to exchange credentials between two Android phones in close proximity, or as a digital car key to unlock your car and start it automatically as you approach it, or to enable new home control possibilities, like for those times when you cannot find the TV remote, you could replace it momentarily with your phone to select some media on the screen, while at the same time, ask your phone to find the remote for you, that happened to be under the couch again, because thankfully it had a UWB beacon in it. So now that we know a bit more about UWB, let's take a look at our new Jetpack library to see what it can do. We launched the alpha version of the library earlier this year. It currently works on devices with Android 12 or newer, enables phone to phone or phone to IoT device use cases, and like all our Jetpack libraries, plays well with Kotlin. It comes ready with UWB controller and controlly ranging profiles. If you're wondering what those are, don't worry, we'll talk about them later. And it's compatible with FIRA Mac 1.3 compliant accessories. FIRA is the group that coordinates companies working with UWB, and Google is an active member. And Mac 1.3 is the spec that defines things like how the communication works, messaging format, encryption, etc. The library has a few restrictions. Only for foreground apps and services are allowed to start a new session. So if the app goes to the background, the client will no longer receive reports. But those will resume once the app or service moves back to the foreground. These constraints are there to preserve optimal battery usage, but may change in the future as we continue to improve the library. Now, before we look at the code, let's review a few things you need to know. You're out out-of-band mechanism, the role of your app in the communication, and the configuration needed for the devices you will work with. The out-of-band, or OOB, is just the way UWB devices find each other. UWB doesn't have a native discovery mechanism, and the Jetpack library does not provide one either. So you will need to choose one for your app and implement it before you start a UWB session. BLE scan and advertisement is the most common use OOB, but you could also use other RF technologies like Wi-Fi, GAT, or the nearby connections API. We will review an example later in the video. A UWB ranging session happens between a controller and one or more controllees. Ranging here is just the calculation of time taken by the radio signal to travel between devices and the distance between them. A controller defines the communication channel, starts the session, and sets the parameters to be used. And the control E device that responds to the controller calls. If you plan to develop an app between two Android devices, you have to decide which one would play each role. On the other hand, if you're ranging from an Android phone to another IoT accessory, typically that device will be the controller. And the last thing you have to decide is the right configuration for your devices. The library provides configuration sets with predefined parameters like type of range in session, range and interval, security type, etc. In the current alpha version, however, there's only one available, config ID1, 
that when selected sets the channel and security type to static STS. We're working closely with our UWE partners to add more configuration sets in the future. Now, with all those concepts out of the way, let's take a deep dive and finally look at some code. First of all, you need to add the library dependency in your project configuration. In this example, we're setting it to the latest version, alpha 3. Then, as a good practice, always check if the Android device supports ultra wideband. Pixel 6 and 7 Pro and some of the latest Samsung and Xiaomi devices already do. You can query for this feature using the hardware UWB string in Package Manager. The next step is to discover and create the OOB connection between the devices. With BLE, in this example, it is as simple as getting a reference to the BLE scanner, configure it with the appropriate service UUID, and do a regular Bluetooth scan. If your app is going to be both controller and control E, this service UUID is usually defined by the app. If the app is only control E for another controller, that ID will be pro provided by the device manufacturer. When you use BLE as a OOB mechanism, all the information about the UWB device can be extracted directly from the service data byte stream, returned by each scan record object. The key pieces of information to search for are the UUID, the UWB address, and UWB channel. Once discovery is complete and you capture the required information from each device, you need to initialize your session by getting an instance of UWB manager and then call controller session scope on the controller or controlee session scope on the controlee. Keep in mind that Android allocates a new random address for every new session. So this needs to happen before you exchange parameters with your UWB peers. After the sessions are initialized, you have to exchange your device parameters. Controller and controlee exchange their local addresses, which on Android can be obtained from their corresponding session scope objects. And for accessories, it should be provided by the vendor. The controller also needs to share the UWB channel that on Android is automatically generated and can be retrieved from the UWB controller session scope object, and optionally, a session key to be used for the ranging. If the profile uses a static STS security, this is a byte array with vendor ID and security type information. Now, you need to set those parameters in the corresponding ranging parameters object, like you see here. And then call prepare session on the object. This will return a flow of ranging result objects. A flow is just an asynchronous data stream that when consumed, initiates the UWB ranging session and then returns a collection of ranging result position objects. And that ranging result position object is the one that contains the detailed information about the UWB device, the distance in meters between controller and controlee, and the azimuth and elevation angles relative to the other device. Oof, that was a lot of information, but if you just want to take a few things with you today, just remember this. UWB is a very accurate and secure technology that let you know the exact position of other capable devices at a very close range, three inches, indoors and outdoors. Our new Jetpack library empowers you to build apps for Android 12 or newer devices that support UWB. And you can make your app behave like a controller or controlling. So check the documentation and samples provided in our developer site and let us know what you think. We cannot wait to see what you can build with UWB. Thanks. Mm -hmm.